So let me use game theory to explain why this is the case, okay? Game theory. So in game theory, we discussed before how when you have a game where there are millions of different players, okay? The secret to winning this game is cheating. And you do that by forming secret alliances, right? So these three do it. The problem is, this is actually pretty obvious. We understand this rule. So guess what? A lot of people form secret alliances. Okay? So to win this game, if you want to win this game, you have to be part of as many powerful secret alliances as possible. You have to be the intersection of these groups, okay? So you're here, but you're also here. You're also here, okay? But as we discussed pre previously, these secret societies have developed systems to make you loyal, to make you obedient, to make sure that you will never betray them. So the only way around this problem is to create multiple personalities, right? Because literally, you're a different person in a different circumstance. And therefore, they're never able to figure out what you really think. Spies have the skill, okay? When spies are being recruited, um, the one skill that they're looking for is dissociation. Is this person able to quickly dissociate from who he is? Lack of empathy, basically. They're all psychopaths, basically, okay? So in real life, in a game, it's a person with the most multiple personalities that wins out. The problem, though, is when we, when we go back to Egypt, the pharaoh is born in that position. So now the question is, are you able to take a person and create multiple personalities from that person? And the answer is yes. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how. By, by the way, the word we use for this is psychopath. Okay? All right, if you have multiple personalities, you're a psychopath. All right, so I'm gonna show you how they do this in Egypt. Remember, a pharaoh was born in that position, and so now the priests who control the pharaoh, they have to train that priest to have multiple personalities. The, the mystery today is, how would they do this? And again, we don't know, but I'm speculating how they would do this. Okay, so if you look at mythology, Egyptian mythology is different from all other world mythologies. There's Greek mythology, there's Chinese mythology, there's Babylonian mythology, but Egyptian mythology, it's unique, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna explain to you the basic contours of the mythology, very simple. So there are three main characters in the mythology. There's Ra, the sun god. There's Osiris, and there's Horus. Okay, these are the three main gods that Egyptians worship. Ra is what gave life to the universe. He's a sun god. Osiris is the god of civilization. He built Egypt. Okay? And then Horus is the god of kingship of empire. He's the one who brings stability to the throne. Okay, so there are different stories associated with Ra, Osiris, and Horus. Ra what he does is every night he goes into the underworld and he fights the serpent, Opithis. Every night, Opithis, the serpent, he's trying to swallow the sun to prevent the sun from rising. So Ra must kill him every night. Okay? And there are different ways that he kills Opithis. Sometimes he stabs Osir Opithis with a knife. Sometimes he uses a lance. Sometimes he burns Opithis, okay? Sometimes he strangles Opithis, but there are different ways that he kills Opithis. But rest assured, he kills Opithis every single night so that the sun can rise in the morning. If one day uh, Ra doesn't defeat Opithis, well, you have a solar eclipse, okay? The sun cannot rise, but rest assured, Ra will defeat him eventually, okay? Eventually, Ra gives birth to Osiris. 
Now Cyrus is a great pharaoh, but his brother Set, Seth, it's pronounced Seth, okay, but it's, it's spelled Set. Um, he is jealous. He wants the throne. So he tricks Osiris. One day he says to Osiris, look, I built a tomb. And this tomb is really comfortable. And so Osiris, oh, let me try. So Osiris jumps in the tomb and he's like, whoa, it's really comfortable. And of course, Seth then closes the tomb and then throws the tomb away. Now, now, Good news is that I saw, Osiris has, has a smart wife. He's pretty dumb, but, but Isis is pretty smart. So Isis is now looking for Osiris. And Seth's like, oh, I can't allow si uh, Isis to find Osiris. So Seth cuts Osiris into a million pieces, okay? So uh, tomb, and then he cuts up Osiris and throws Osiris all around the world. But Isis is committed. So Isis goes around the world and finds all the pieces and reassembles him, okay? But, he, but she knows that eventually Seth will find them again. So he, she has sex with him really quickly, which gives birth to Horus. And Horus is, wants the throne back. So he goes to war with Seth. And they have a series of challenges, okay? And some of these challenges include drowning. So what they do is they turn each other into hippos, they go into the bottom of the river, and they see who can hold the breath the longest. They drown each other, okay, basically. But also, um, there's a challenge where set, can you see this word? Okay, R-A-P-E, okay? He will do this to Horus because it's a sign of domination. But eventually, Horus wins out, and he becomes the pharaoh. Okay? So this is the main structure of Egyptian mythology. And as you can see, it's really weird. Okay? And it doesn't make, really make sense as a story. It's not a great story. But if you don't see it as a story, but as a script, it makes a lot more sense, right? It's not something to be believed. It's something to be acted out. Okay? Why? Because in e Egyptian religion, in the religion... The pharaoh is a literal reincarnation of Ra, Osiris, and Horus. And when you act these things out, you become the gods because you have their memories. Okay? So, how? Let me explain this. Okay? I, I know you're a bit confused by this, but let, let me explain. So, let's go back to Kant. What Kant tells us is that there's something called the nomana, which are the things in themselves. We can never know the things in themselves. We can never know true reality. We can only know the phenomena, which is the things we see. In other words, we cannot differentiate between what is true and what is false. So if you're able to control our experience, you're able to control our memories, okay? So let me give you another example of this. Remember Monkey Island? On Monkey Island, we, we discussed this previously, 100 people are transported onto an island um, randomly, and they have to survive millions of flesh-eating monkeys. And this experience makes them strong, wise, and united. They're transported back to the real world, and together, they conquer the world together. But now the challenge is, how do I ensure that my children, and my grandchildren, and my grandchildren inherit my legacy? And the answer is through ritual, okay? So what you do is you take your children, you put them on an island, and you tell them a story, and then you give them psychedelics. Psychedelics are drugs that enhance your experience. So you actually believe the story is happening to you, okay? It's like being put into a movie. Okay, and then you have these rituals that make you believe that you actually experienced this yourself. Okay? So, this is what we call programming. And this is the great secret of the human brain. Every human brain can be programmed in a certain way. Okay? So, let's go back to the story. 
What's going on here? This is a recipe for programming the pharaoh into separate identities. All three of these individuals, Ra, Osiris, Horus, represent different identities. Ra represents the virtuous hero, right? Osiris represents the passive victim. And Horus represents the vengeful child. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay? So, by doing these different rituals, I can get the Pharaoh to believe he's a different person in different circumstances. So, while the Pharaoh is drugged up, the Pharaoh is dressed up as Ra, and he will take an effigy or a real person, and he will stab, lance, burn, or strangle that person to feel as though you're a virtuous hero. And also what will happen is that the Pharaoh will then be um, asked to be Osiris. And guess what? The person will be put in a tomb, cut up, and have sex with a prostitute, okay? Pretending to be a priest. And then Horus will be, of course, this, okay? So this is all to create trauma, which creates disassociation, which allows the priest to program the pharaoh. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. So, how this works is, while this is happening, there's the, the um, pharaoh is under a lot of trauma, but there's always someone there to support the pharaoh, and that's Isis, right? So there's a priest in the Isis mask using the Isis voice to calm the pharaoh, even have sex with the pharaoh, to make the pharaoh dependent on Isis. And now Isis becomes the controller, the person that the pharaoh will always trust. So if the priests ever want to tell pharaoh to do something, then late at night, while the pharaoh is sleeping or on drugs, Isis, wearing the mask, can come in and whisper the pharaoh what to do. Okay? And in the system, there are different ways in which the priest can use to activate the different identities. But the main mechanism is smell. Okay? Smell. And what this means is that while all this is happening, there are different scents for different identities. Okay? So, for example, with Ra, it might be incense. Okay? But with Osiris, it might be, I don't know, roses. Who knows? Okay? But so what happens is when the pharaoh is the throne room and the priest needs the pharaoh to make a certain decision, the priest will let out different scents, which will activate different emotions in the pharaoh, which then determines how the pharaoh will make the decision. Okay, so there's different control mechanisms. Okay, and what's important for us to understand is we're all like this, right? Because, for example, um, we have different identities. At school, we're a student, but at home, we're a child. When we're outside, we're friends, we're a friend. When we're at work, we're an employee. So we behave differently depending on the different circumstance. And the circumstance activates a certain emotion, certain identity, certain behavior, certain actions in us. Okay? So we're all programmable, but the pharaoh has to be programmed to a certain degree.